Hey, I'm Dave Carger here for IMDb at the Toronto International Film Festival 2018. And right now I'm joined by the cast of Hotel Mumbai. Hi guys. Great to see all three of you. Dev, I want to start with you. This is a very different kind of hotel movie India <laughs> film for you. <laughs> uh, what are your recollections of going through this process to make this film, which is one of the most intense that I've ever seen in my life? Wow. Um, wow. Uh, it, it's, um, I mean, it was a really, really, for all of us, you know, it kind of, intense is the right word, but, um, you know, you're drawing on such a horrific real life event, you know, uh, you know, where these terrorists entered this hotel and uh, were just looking to draw blood, you know, and uh, we kind of, as a cast, it really brought us together because, you know, you're, you're working on set throughout the day, essentially in a mock terrorist situation where you're running from gunfire and, you know, AK-47s and there's blood everywhere and then you go back and stay in your hotel and all of a sudden you start to look at the exits and it starts mm. to permeate into your skin. Obviously it's all make believe and we're very lucky, but uh, it, it was a very difficult uh, thing and it was only because we had such a wonderful ensemble that we could go back and kind of, it was one of those intense experiences that brings you together, I think. Well, Naz, one thing that's different about this film is that the film really helps the audience to get to know the people that are playing the terrorists too, not just the people who are the victims. These are real characters played by fine actors in the film. How much did you guys choose or not choose to socialize with the actors playing the terrorists? It's, that's a really great question, because I think on the whole we avoided too much. There was obviously some socializing, but I think on the whole there was definitely a separation of hostages and the gunmen. And um, I think that wasn't a deliberate choice. I think it was just the situation, the filming, the, mm. the way it was, the emotions of it all, I think, l you know, lends itself to that. Um, and it would be very hard to sort of be in character in the morning if you'd been out to dinner, you know, um, socializing and getting to know, humanizing essentially someone. Uh, but I think that's what's beautiful about the film is more than just being a story about terror, it's about it's an examination of raw human responses to class divisions, socioeconomic divides. Um, and I think that's what, you know, and, and also the resilience of the human spirit and how we can draw from each other, draw, draw strength from each other, particularly in these very divisive times. And Tilda, one thing that's fascinating about this film is that you see in many different instances a decision that someone makes in a split second moment is the difference between living and dying three minutes later. Particularly for your character who is a nanny looking after your character Naz's baby, right? Mm -hmm. So is that something that you thought a lot about while you were filming this? Yeah, I mean, I think that making something like this, it's very hard, even just reading the accounts or um, watching some of the documentaries that's been made on it, you can't help but place yourself in that experience and think, what would I have done in that moment? And I think what's so beautiful about this story, obviously there's so much horror and tragedy, but the beauty comes from the amazing ways in which people did respond. I think, you know, these bullets didn't discriminate and everyone was an, an equal playing ground all of a sudden. Didn't matter how much money you had, right. everyone was suddenly just there to try and survive. And the incredible empathy and compassion and bravery that people had, you know, I, I hope that I could respond in the ways that people did, particularly the hotel staff. They were extraordinary. You know, they were making bulletproof vests out of kitchenware to try and protect the guests. Um, so it was a really interesting. It really does make you think about your own life and how you react. And as you said, I have a six-month-old baby in my hands the entire film. <laughs> and that really, the contrast of holding such an innocent creature in your arms that has no concept of the horror going on around it is was intense and sort of beautiful as well. Like, you know, every time I'd be crying, the baby would inherently be laughing and the other way around. And mm. it just drenched every moment in such reality. And um, yeah, you, you just can't help but think what you would do. And you're right, it's all in a split second. I mean, the movie is two hours long and at times it's almost unbearable to watch. I've never seen evil put on a movie screen 
to the extent that it is here. And I was just thinking to myself after I saw it, what must it have been like for you guys as a cast to be in that mentality that for me was difficult for two hours for the weeks that it took to make this movie? Um, I, drew, I drew strength personally from being with this cast. I can't imagine this film having been made with a different cast. I think uh, we all essentially, it was a gut-wrenching experience for all of us but having just the support, the moral support and also the friendship of these guys on and off screen. Um, Tilda said earlier that we literally passed on this, this fragile um, thing from one, one person to each, in the next every day. And it really is this trust that was built between us for months on end and, and then enjoying each other's company mm. in the evening sometimes was a nice break from the craziness. It's like kind of sharing the brutality of it, because if it, because we're an ensemble, you know, you didn't have to have that on your shoulders by yourself. Like that's what we were talking about earlier in a previous interview. That we kind of, as like messed up as it sounds, but yeah. you're, you're, you're sharing the brutality, and that's a kind of metaphor for the film. Mm. You know, you got this. You know, they're in the confined walls of this hotel. It's a microcosm of the entire of India in a way. You've got the poor at the bottom. Mm. You know, working. You know, in the kitchens and. They put on these magical cloaks. You know, my, my character is a waiter from the slums, and this magical cloak is his uniform, and it allows him to stand next to a billionaire and pour him, you know, blue label, blue label vodka. But when the terrorists strike, that that class divide is gone, and you're just a herd of a human herd, you mm. know. And uh, that that brutality is what brought people together, and the, the strays were actually the terrorists, but the the people that, you know unfortunately died or survived were the ones that are trying to bring each other together and get out of it as a, a singular molecule, which is a real testament to, to the people in there. The hotel where this horrible event took place, the Taj uh, in Mumbai, has been re rebuilt, renovated, it's open. Have you all spent much time in that hotel? Have you gotten to walk through the halls and, and feel what it's like? Yeah, we went actually as a group, yeah. yeah. And, and that was a personal choice. We just all kind of decided we wanted to see it and experience what it would be like to walk down the halls and in the rooms. And, and in fact, after the, the attacks, it, they made it a point to uh, get this hotel back and running within three weeks. Oh. And that was a message. They were like, we're going to do this, and it's, it's not going to stop us, this, it, this attack. But actually, it, you know, the, the reason that that was one of the places it was, you know, that they um, centered on was that it's actually... It means so much to the Indians in Mumbai. Like it, it was one of the first buildings to have electricity. Mm. It, um, you know, it was frequented by so many legends. You know, from politicians to movie stars to, I think one of the Beatles went there or something. But uh, so to take that down, this 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 bastion of, of real pride, uh, it meant so much more than you know, just a building. So, Dev, this is the tenth anniversary of Slumdog Millionaire. Oh. And the attack too. Uh, it, yeah. Yes, right. So, yeah, but it is the 10th anniversary yeah. of Slumdog Millionaire. What do you think about when you think about the whole experience of that film 10 years later? Oh, man, like I, I came to my to, to my first Toronto with Slumdog. I had my school shoes on, <laughs> and it's like it was a, it's a really crazy experience. You know, I got locked out of the car because the paparazzi were running after my co-star and I, it kind of nearly drove off without me and I'm like, hey, I'm the slum dog. Uh, but it kind of, uh, it's amazing coming back here and, and not only seeing the festival just grow, but it really has a special place in my heart because it, it was responsible for, I guess, putting the film that put me on the map in a way. But, uh, you know, yeah, I just, I love it. I really do. I really love it out here. Great. Yeah. Okay, so I, I cannot let you leave Canada right. without picking a question from our IMDb Mountie <laughs> hat. So pick a question, Dev, and all three uh, yeah. of you will okay. answer it. Here we okay. Go on, actually, ladies, but you should okay, pick you it. Go. Yeah, go on. I feel like we're still go, on. go ahead. Go ahead, uh, Tilda. Okay. Um, TIFF is a festival for film lovers. Yeah. What else do you wish there was a festival for? That's an amazing question. Yeah, film, what else do you wish um, there was a festival for? Um, oh, gosh. Uh, Ooh. A festival for advocacy. Ooh, that was a, I was like going to go real dorky. I went, that yeah, was, yeah, please yeah, please go dorky. Make it funny. Um, make it funny. 
Is it? Uh, go on, go on. No, you go. You got something brewing that was great. You're in the hat. Go. What else do you wish it was a festival for? What else do you wish there was a festival for? Oh. Someone said candy. Someone said sleeping. Candy and knickknacks. Because I've just been shoving candy. Yeah. Um. God, that's a really hard one. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe just like uh, you know, everyday objects that we could just celebrate the things yeah. you use all the there time, like a doorknob, or, like mundane Toast things, it. just yeah. to like go, hey, like we don't talk about you enough, but every day I use a spoon, exactly. and that's yeah. so handy. Spoons are brilliant. The toaster festival. Yeah. Genius. You heard it here this first. Hats off to yeah. you. Yes, Ms. and this Cobham is why. <laughs> this is why Hotel <laughs> Mumbai was not an utterly miserable experience. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Guys, thank you so much. Enjoy your premiere tonight. Thank, thank you. Great to see all three of you. Thanks very much. Cheers. All right. Cheers. 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 Cheers.